so you can get all that nice bubbly goodness in a nice and relaxed manner, which is something that I want for you. <laughs> I want it for you very much. So I'm going to be showing you how to make this bubble, and in particular, uh, this is the wrong tab, how to make this uh, bubble material, and we're going to explain why it works and, you know, the fastest way to make a bubble. So I'm going to open up a new instance of Blender, and uh, this is what you should be seeing to begin with, so don't be scared. We're all starting from the beginning. So I'm going to start off by choosing a shape that is more bubbly, so a cube probably isn't the best choice for this. Instead, I'm going to add in a UV sphere, because most bubbles I've seen are fairly uh, spherical, if not uh, ellipsoids. So, uh, we're going to set this to Shade Smooth, and you can either go to the Modifiers tab and manually add in a subdivision surface, or what I recommend is using the hotkey Control 2, 3, or 4. So, Control 3 adds a subdivision surface with Viewport Level 3, which we can apply. So that's just a shortcut. Okay, cool. So now we have a nice, uh, very smoothed out sphere. And uh, before we really get into it, we just need to set up our scene a bit. So in the Render tab, I'm going to swap over to Cycles Render Engine using GPU, so it calculates much faster. And the reason we're, we're using uh, Cycles is because we're going to be dealing with a lot of refraction and a lot of transparency. And uh, Cycles does that, you know, it does it more photorealistically. So let's swap over to Cycles and remove our light. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to set a nice environment so we get all those nice uh, reflections and lighting interactions that we don't have to set up manually. So in the World tab, I'm going to go to Color and add in A. <laughs> if I can do it, I'm going to add in a Environment Texture and set this to an HDRI, which, by the way, you can download for free on the internet, hdrihaven.com. has a great HDRIs for free, royalty-free. And, you know, maybe CCO textures as well, I don't know. So I'm just going to pick this nice HDRI of a mall parking lot. <laughs> we are so fortunate to have this HDRI. Okay, cool. And now that we're pretty much set up, we can head over to the shading workspace, which is where we're going to be creating our material. So let's create a new material called something very creative, something nobody would think about, like whatever I want. I'm a madman. Okay. And now all we have to do is some very simple modifications of this principle to be SDF just to get this uh, started. So first of all, I'm just going to hide all of this uh, background from the camera because it might be a bit distracting. So you can do that by using this. Uh, I have no idea how to pronounce this, but you can bring up the opacity of that to get rid of the background. So there's less, uh, you know, stuff to, uh, you know, we're just trying to keep it simple visually. So first of all, what I'm going to do is lower the roughness, which you can see makes this kind of very reflective. That's why you see this nice highlight of the light before you couldn't see it, right? But now fully, re uh, fully reflective roughness set to zero. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to set the transmission to one which is going to make it kind of like a, or actually exactly like a glass ball. And if you didn't know, um, the way white refracts, it kind of flips everything upside down vertically, which is why you see the sky on the bottom, even though it's up top, and uh, vice versa. Next, or maybe, <laughs> maybe that's just a reflection with the transmission. Next, what we're going to do is play with the index of refraction, which describes how light is going to kind of refract through this. So air has a index of refraction of 1, but if we set this to 1, you can see that it's kind of like almost perfectly transparent, as if light isn't bending at all. And a bubble, it, a bubble is actually like the way you simulate it, is using something called thin film, which um, other render engines have. But uh, Cycles doesn't, so we're going to have to fake it. I'm going to choose a IOR of something very close to one, but just slightly higher, like 1.05. This way we get a tiny, tiny bit of refraction, but 
Um, it's not literally air, uh, which is what we want to avoid. Now, what you're going to notice is that we're getting some kind of very weird, um, you know, refraction and light interactions. And that is because right now what we have is essentially a glass ball, whereas a bubble is just kind of like the surface of it. It's the shell. The volume is just air. So we want this to be hollow, not filled in. To simulate this, again, since we don't have thin film, which is, you know, that's what we need, we can go over to the modifiers tab and add in a solidify modifier, which instantly changes the whole look of this. And what the solidify modifier does is it gives us a shell of uh, this thickness, which we can control. So here we have a uh, thick boy bubble, and um, you want to keep this very low. 0.01, which is what it is by default, is usually fine. So now you can see it's just very, very slightly refractive. This is what it was like before with glass, you know, way too much, but 1.05 or maybe 1.1 is good. Next, we want to kind of uh, compensate for the fact that we can't do thin film by maybe increasing the clear coat. So here's what it looks like all the way. You know, very reflective. I recommend doing something like 0.5 for this. Okay, cool. And just as a tiny note, uh, you can see that our bubble is kind of, um, you know, it's not very bright. And, you know, you could either fix that here, but uh, what we're going to do instead is just kind of raise the exposure or gamma of the entire scene. So for a gamma, I'm going to choose something like 1.75, just to make everything a bit brighter temporarily. We can go back to this. Okay, cool. So now what we want to do is we kind of have the base for our bubble, but it doesn't have any, like, soapy colors, any of that. Um, it almost looks like iridescence, what we're going for, like colored metal. To do this, we're going to add in a layer weight node and connect not the Fresnel, but the facing. We're going to connect the facing to base color, which immediately makes our um, bubble very dark, but don't worry about that. We're going to fix it. So what we're going to do is we don't literally want the facing connected here, but we want to use the facing to drive the color that we want to add to this. So I'm going to add a hue saturation node and pick, you know, any color that's fully saturated. So red, yellow, green, doesn't matter. I'm going to just choose red to keep it simple. And we're going to use this facing to change the hue and then plug this into the base color which you can see gives us this very, very nice gradient. This is what it looks like, um, you know, without any of the shading. And you can see it's kind of like independent of the view it uh, follows along, uh, which is what this uh, facing is. So now we just want to make this, you know, significantly less intense, and that is controlled by the saturation. So uh, I recommend picking something like 0.2 or maybe even a 0.25, but already this is uh, pretty strong. And basically what this is doing, the setup is we have some color that has, you know, a hue of, you know, zero. And um, this facing is basically altering the hue as it gets closer to the center, which is what you're looking at. But we can also uh, distort this a little, because, you know, it's not supposed to be a perfect radial gradient. Maybe we want something like a wave texture to distort this. And let's just view what this looks like. We want this to be a pretty distorted, uh, you know, thing starting starting off with. So maybe something like this. And we're going to use this to plug it into the blend, which isn't going to work uh, to begin with. Let me show you what it does. Let's uh, bring the saturation back up so I can show you. It kind of distorts everything too much. It has uh, too much power. So... Uh, to correct for this, we basically need to add some strength to this, and the best way to do this is with some uh, math nodes. So I'm going to have one set to add to 0.5 and the other set to multiply, and uh, this number that we're multiplying by, you know, for the product, this number is going to be our strength. So with zero, you see it does nothing. With one, we get, you know, very, very strong but we can set it to something low, like 0.2, to get nice distortion. Or you can slowly bring it up, whatever you want. And by the way, um, you might understand the uh, strength, but uh, you're wondering why we're adding 0.5, and that's just because by default the blend is set to 0.5, so we want to keep that. Um, but with this additional mod,
modification, so that's why we add 0.5 back in. Okay, cool. So you can see we get this very distorted, um, you know, coloring that we can desaturate again. So something like 0.2. And you can always, you know, change this later, but this is a good uh, starting place. And you can see that already we're getting something that looks, you know, pretty bubbly, at least, you know, in theory. But um, it's kind of like too transparent. We'd expect a bubble to be, you know, more, um, or I think I said the opposite of what I wanted to. It's uh, too opaque. Right? We want it to be uh, more transparent because it's a bubble, you know, it's not like, it's not like looking through a metal ball or anything. And kind of like the final modification we can do to really hone in what we want is use this uh, alpha slider, which just makes everything uh, more transparent as you can see. So with an alpha of like 0.13, which is very close to zero, you can barely see it, but uh, you want to pick some number that you like, something like uh, 0.5. So already that looks much, much more like a bubble. So this is what it was like before, you know, way too intense. And now 0.5. Perfect. Now what I'm gonna do just to make this look more like a bubble is maybe add some shallow depth of field, which will make it look like this, you know, small and like miniature delicate object, which I like the look of. So um, in our camera settings, we're gonna enable depth of field and set it to a very shallow, you know, very low f-stop, very shallow depth of field. And to make sure that everything is in focus, you can go to the material preview and uh, use this uh, reflection to change the distance until it's perfectly sharp. So 9.7 is better than 10 in my case. And now we have this uh, super, super shallow uh, depth of field that uh, works with uh, any rotation of our HDRI. So if I rotate this to like 60 degrees uh, to change the lighting, you can still see that the HDRI is fairly defocused. And you can just pick a good uh, orientation for this that looks best. And that's really up to you, I suppose. <laughs> or of course, you know, after the fact, uh, since this is a PPR material, um, physically based, you can always just you know, change what HDRI you're using, and it will, you know, still look, you know, pretty much like a bubble. You might need to do some modifications, but it should be pretty good uh, to start off with. I'm going to change it back to what we were using before. And the nice thing about this uh, method is that in general, most of it is done inside the material, which means we can always, like, delete the object, use something like a, a torus instead which we apply the uh, material to. And then all we have to remember, look at this very sharp edge, uh, all we have to remember is to apply a solidify modifier to make it look more uh, bubbly. In this, in this case, it's still a bit rough, so I recommend adding a subdivision surface above the uh, solidify, which takes care of all of the, all of the uh, weird shading. And this might look, you know, a bit unnatural, but that's just because, you know, bubbles are never in this shape, so it doesn't look realistic in that sense, but in terms of uh, material, it should be pretty good. Let me just add in the uh, solidify. And yeah, already we have a very, very nice looking bubble, so super easy to make. You can control stuff like the, um, the saturation of, you know, the coloring, the amount of distortion over here as well as the uh, alpha, the alpha, which is the transparency. And you can always experiment going closer and closer to one. Remember the IOR of one is like air, which is like way too intense. So you want to keep it slightly above, but just near one. And I think, you know, that that's pretty much the essence of how to make a bubble in Blender. You know, nothing super complicated, just trying to keep it simple. You can always change the exposure of everything after the fact. But, um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this, uh, you know, tutorial. Hopefully it clarified it for people who wanted the uh, nice, slow, relaxing ASMR version. <laughs> and that burp in the end, that squeal. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, and if you did and you want to donate and have the means to do so, the best way to do that is via uh, Patreon, because you also get uh, benefits there, but it is
is a very, very generous donation for anybody who wants to do it, so um, only if you have the means to. But anyways, now that that is out of the way, um, I hope you enjoyed this free tutorial. I had a pleasure making it, and I, I hope it brought a smile to your face. It's really bringing a smile to mine. I'll see you guys around.